Hello everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 where today we are going to be building the B-2 bomber. Now I'm going to call this B-2-ish because building the actual B-2 in Kerbal Space Program 2 proved very difficult. So I got as close as we can reasonably get. Uh, oh, ignore these wing fences, those aren't supposed to be there. Uh, but yeah, here is our beautiful B-2. So we're going to start this off with a quick tutorial on how to make one on your own. Uh, and then after that, we're going to take this thing out to the runway, see what it's capable of, see how fast it can go, all that good stuff. The real B-2 is a subsonic bomber aircraft that was produced by Northrop Grumman, I believe, until like 2000 or so. Uh, and that's what this is supposed to reflect. It's got this very uh, distinct kind of shape to it with this ridged wing. Uh, but anyway, this is a really simple build, so we'll get right into it here. First, you're going to want to start out with the... So if we go to Command Modules, you want to start out with this cockpit. So, nice and simple. And then you go to Fuel Tanks and you take the medium-sized, um, I guess, oblong-looking fuel tank. Connect that to the cockpit. Uh, and then behind that, we have this adapter, which of course is rotated so it fits the correct way. And then behind that, we have this nose cone. So that is how you build the fuselage section. So let me get rid of all these parts. Okay, perfect. So next, you're gonna grab a pair of medium wings. So this right here. And you're gonna attach them right to the edge of this fuselage section, the actual fuel tank. Now. The important thing with these wings, you need to replicate these settings. So I'll scroll through these real quickly. Very cool. Uh -huh. So what gives us our actual flying wing appearance here? You're then going to take your rotate and translate tool. You're going to grab your wing and you're going to use this red arrow to bring the wings together to the point where they're touching. They create this nice point at the front of the craft. Uh, and then you're going to use the green arrow to drag them up a little bit so that they're flush with the cockpit just like this. Now it's not going to be perfect, you can still kind of see the cockpit underneath there, but it's as close as you're going to get. Next up, we're going to add the engines, the intakes, and the fuel tanks here. So for the intake we used, let me pull it up here. Uh, yeah, here it is, the ramp intake. <clears throat> now, while this isn't exactly like the real B2, it's as close as I could get. If you wanted to, you could probably use two of these side by side to make it look a little more like the actual B2. Um, but I decided against that because then it's going to make this fuel tank look a little clunky. Uh, but anyway, take that and attach it to this fuel tank. So the small one right here. And then at the back of those fuel tanks, you're gonna want one whiplash engine. So these are jet engines, so obviously it limits the service ceiling of this craft, but I thought that being a subsonic bomber, giving it like a rapier, which is kind of a rocket engine, would be just a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> so I decided against that. Um, but yeah, so then take the, that engine assembly and place it right up against your uh, fuselage here attached to the wings. Then you're just going to take a small wing, so we go to aerodynamics, small wing, this right here, and place that on the edge of your medium wing, and then set those wing settings equal to these numbers right here. We'll scroll through them real fast. So yeah, there you go. And then just use your rotate and translate tool again to get the leading edge as close as you can to flush. It's really difficult. I got it pretty close here. Um, but this is what it should look like when it's finished. And then it's just a simple task of adding landing gear to the bottom. So we've got one set here, one set here. To increase the like stealth look of this, I would pull these up into the plane a little bit. Kind of makes it look a little more stealthy i guess um but anyway without further ado let's test this thing out uh in real life as i said this bomber is subsonic in kerbal space program it is decidedly 
supersonic. Uh, hello? Oh. Okay, for some reason the engines are being weird. Something about this save, uh, for some reason it got a little messed up. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah, so this save got a little messed up for me. Uh, I don't really know why. But it, it's just been being weird. I've actually tried to record this video three times already, and this is my third attempt because the last two times it crashed. Um, but there you have it. There is your beautiful B2 bomber. I think, like, especially from about this distance away, this thing looks just like the real thing. It looks like this super fast, like, stealthy bomber. You can see we are not subsonic. We're comfortably exceeding Mach 1. We're headed up on Mach 2. Very agile, very easy to turn. So if we want to turn, we pitch this way and then just give them a little, there we go. And then go back to flat. There it is. Now this thing's maneuverability is really enhanced by these whiplash engines, which have gimbals on them. Uh, but we also have control surfaces on both of these wings, which makes it super like easy to control. This is not realistic. I don't think the real thing has control surfaces on its inner wings. But, I mean, I'm in it for the fun, not necessarily the complete realism. And if you need to pull up suddenly, it's incredibly agile, as I'll demonstrate with this turn. Sometimes it gets a little wonky when you're turning, like I've completely lost control of it there, I'll admit it. <laughs> but it's so light and the jet engines are powerful enough that it flies really, really well. One of the downsides, one of the few downsides to this craft, so you'll notice I've had SAS off for most of this flight. If I turn SAS on, at first everything seems fine. We're going subsonic, so this is a realistic speed for this thing. You can see our nice little shadow over there. Now if we exceed supersonic flight, look, my hands are not touching the keyboard. I don't know why this happens. And notice how our speed has suddenly stopped increasing. If I turn SAS off, Watch how the speed climbs. So, I guess, let's see how fast this thing can go if I just keep it going in a straight line at sea level or close to sea level. Um, let me see. So, also encountering this weird error with these engines where they're not... They're not showing me the thrust dynamically. So normally, you can look at this number and it'll show you how much thrust your engines are generating. Um, but for some reason that's not working on this one. And yeah, so Mach 1 is 323 meters per second. So Mach 2 would be 646 and Mach 3 would be, what is that, 979. Oh, and we're out of fuel. <laughs> um, but yeah, this thing will comfortably exceed Mach 3. And isn't that just such a such a beautiful shot there. Ah, oh, look at that thing. Look at it go. Yeah, I think this is a super cool craft. A uh, really fun one to build and super agile. It would be good for, like, probably planetary missions. I'm going to scrub off too much speed here and then I'm going to fall out of the sky. There we go. Uh, it's really tough to land, though, I will say. And, you know, we have good landing gear placement, but it just doesn't hold up. I've also noticed, so I don't know if you guys were going to be able to hear that or not, but, like, if you are headed down towards the ground or the ocean, as you start to speed up and get really close to it, there's, like, this drum beat that plays. Uh, it's, it's really cool. They've got some cool, like, dynamic music going on here. So let's see if we can manage a gentle splash down in the water. We're still going way too fast, so 
gonna try to scrub off a little speed here. I can't imagine doing this in real life. I mean, being an actual pilot and having to land in the ocean it must be terrifying. So let's pitch up. <laughs> okay, so it glides really, really well. Like you can glide pretty far in this thing. Starting to lose control because we're slowing down. We're just inches above the waves. Okay, and... No, come on. That was totally survivable. I think, I think anyway. But yeah, so that is going to do it for this video on the B2 Bomber. Um, I, I'm really enjoying making these real-life crafts, and the SR-71 that I built was... While it was cool, it wasn't nearly as functional as the B2. This thing is agile it's maneuverable and it's really really fast and it's actually going to inform a lot of my normal Kerbal Space Program 2 designs so uh yeah I think this is really cool I'll continue making these planes please comment suggestions the more comments you guys leave on this video the more people it gets put in front of so I really appreciate that uh, if you enjoyed it consider leaving a like and if you really enjoyed it you should probably be subscribed um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.